Utility Dory has suffered the most out of any character in Jujutsu Kaisen. Whether you see that as something that will better him in the future or hold him back, it's just facts. Yuji suffered in numerous ways because this was a ploy from a very sick man, Kenjaku. So here I ask you, do you truly comprehend the amount Yuji has suffered and the more suffering that is still on his way to come? Funnily enough, you don't even understand why Sukuna will be devoured by Yuji Tadori because of this. Sukuna doesn't share the same sentiment as Yuji. He lacks empathy. Let's see if you can swallow my suffering. A quote from Yuji to emphasize that he will be going no matter what the pain is or the cost. At first, he saw himself as a cog. Now it's bigger than that. It is to take down the man known to be the fallen. Leave the Jujutsu like for some hackery luck and let's get into this. Yuji was practically destined to die. Yuji Tudori life has been a lie from the very beginning. He was used and manipulated. He was destined to have a tragic life. The reason for this was none other than Kenjaku. He set everything up. He set up the finger for Yuji to eat and caused more curses to come out of hiding. And this led them to be more problematic in the Jujutsu society. The sole purpose of his existence was being a vessel of Sukuna. While his existence to the Jujutsu sorcerer was to die and save everyone from Sukuna. Either way, Yuji is being used for selfish reasons. This is when the tragedy started, all stemming from the loss of his grandfather. Leaving Yuji isolated and alone, he is shown to be caring for his grandfather in his final moments and sets the poem and the compassion that he usually has. So he is very good hearted and doesn't really want to cause too much trouble to people. We must start with exactly what hurt him in Shibuya. That's where the real issue resides. The stress from knowing your sensei being captured and there's nothing you could do about it at all. Yuji wanted to save Gojo badly. To the point anything that seemed to be in his way or a hassle was face a desperate foe. When hearing he got sealed his face became stone. If it wasn't for Gojo he would have been executed now he's gone. It most definitely must have been a gut-wrenching feeling for sure. The famous encounter between Chozo and Yuji then appeared. Although an excellent spectacle, don't get me wrong, he lost, going through some terrible pain physically after being pierced in the internal organ, the liver. But the memory of a past event that never happened in Chozo is what saved him. The brothers of Itadori was later revealed. Yuji bearing the pain of fighting and killing his brothers could break any man, same way in which it broke Chozo. Sukuna disappointed in Yuji losing. But knowing good later, his time will come. So there was no longer a care in the world for what happened. Yuji's philosophy is to save others no matter what the difficulty is, which he has done on many occasions, but they seem minuscule to what is to come. Yuji being fed fingers while being unconscious leads to Sukuna having 15 fingers. The awakening of Sukuna was the day Yuji recognized he lacked the ability to save people. Yuji's emotions are further compounded by feelings of guilt and self-blame. As a vessel of Sukuna, he experiences an intense internal conflict questioning whether he could have prevented all of this. The chaos, the bloodshed in Shibuya, to ultimately later bearing the full burden as if it was himself. This internal struggle reflects his desire to take responsibility for his role in the incident. Even though he was not directly in control of Sukuna's actions, Yuji's emotions evolved to encompass the simmering anger he had. He was infuriated by the ruthlessness of curses even from the beginning of the show and the destruction they caused again and again. This anger is directed not only towards curses but towards himself. The matter of fact is that Yuji no matter what has happened labels himself as a murderer. This has been very confusing and shows how much he actually takes accountability for what he does. But him not being able to prevent something that was unpreventable even as Higuruma tries to say is kind of worrying and that's not all. As he hurriedly runs into the train station trying his best to keep his emotions intact he sees Mahito and Nanami. Yuji already experiencing a traumatic experience knew from then on it wasn't going to be the last. Nanami with his final words told Yuji, you've got it from here, before Mahito blows Nanami to bits. This was the first time, the first time Yuji snapped in the manner that he did. It was most definitely a build of pure anger and emotions all let out at once from the previous events to now. Yuji fights Mahito who is entertained and loves this, even ended up leaving a mark on Yuji where the scar on his face was born. Constantly throughout the fight, Yuji questions Mahito's morality. At this point, he doesn't quite understand what Mahito really is the mirror of humans. Mahito, even while fighting Yuji, only wants to break his mental resolve, literally trying to destroy Yuji's soul. This was by adding one more piece to the puzzle and that was another friend of his being Nobara. Bringing her dead body back to Yuji would destroy his soul and Mahito would be more than happy. Mahito's clone at the time was actually struggling against Nobara and Yuji was held by her. This glimmer of hope and realization he was no longer fighting alone filled him with temporary happiness 
onto the inevitable Mahito attack, catching her off guard and killing her. Yuji's initial reaction to seeing Nobara's death at the hands of Mahito was one of shock and disbelief. The suddenness and brutality of her death would undoubtedly catch him off guard, leaving him struggling to process the reality of what just happened. As the truth sinks in, Yuji would experience overwhelming grief. Nobara was not only a trusted ally, but someone that was a close friend to Yuji Todori, as they had countless experiences as they were laughing together, they had a good time together and pretty much they went to fight together. So all these experiences into one is now being tossed away as she's about to die. One of Yuji's happy places was gone and her loss would create a deep emotional void in Yuji's heart, triggering profound sadness and sorrow. He couldn't even fight anymore, he literally lost the will to do anything. His resolve reached the limit a long time ago and Maito just added insult to injury. He thrives of this, seeing the suffering and felt so pleased with the result, beating Yuji to a pulp in one of the greatest dialogues that we've seen in the series so far. Yuji had to listen to his ideology being ridiculed throughout. He was broken to bits, feeling like he couldn't fight anymore. Nobara Kikizaki of all people in Shibuya, it was too much for him to handle. Yuji tried to help more people but he couldn't do anything, sees himself as just a murderer. What Yuji felt to be his conviction was nothing but an excuse, now he couldn't forgive himself at all. Toto revived Yuji and gave meaning on why Yuji should progress and that's when Yuji gets up, uses the black flash and in his own words, I'll be sure to take on the suffering, Nanami. Yuji is willing to bear the pain and hatred from everybody including the suffering that's thrown at him. After they exchange their blows and Yuji decides to finish him in this case, even hitting Mahito with the words, I'm you. This is how Yuji redefined his purpose and goal, his true conviction. Even as he spoke, I wanted to reject you, convince myself you are wrong, but it doesn't matter, now I'm going to kill you. Even if you come back as another curse, I'll kill you. Change your name, change your form, I'll kill you again. I don't need to find a reason or meaning. This goes against his previous displays, asking Mahito why and how he did all these irreversible crimes, but his acceptance of being Mahito, the man of human negative emotion, embodied into one being, now being a prey to the predator. And that's before the true predator enters the mix, Kenjaku. This man has been the core creator of ruining Yuji's life. From what is told, Karuri was the mother of Yuji and was killed. Unknown of how she died, Kenjaku conceived Itadori with Jin, Yuji's father. Yuji to this day doesn't know about this and the origin. So what does that tell you about the tragic events occurring to Yuji? Not to mention that Kenjaku attacks him at his weakest state of the Demaito fight, while having Gojo in his grasp. Kenjaku indirectly is the man that took everything away from Yuji. From this point on, Shibuya arc stamped the pure grief and sorrow of Yuji Todori. But the Culling Games proliferates the process. Fast forward to the day that Sukuna strikes. Using Yuji's body, after Megumi's sister was taken over by Yorozu in chain. This word was in the binding vow made between Sukuna and Yuji when Yuji was dead. Sukuna had one minute not to hurt any of his friends or anybody at all, but did not use it upon himself. Megumi was targeted. The finger of Yuji was ripped and given to Megumi. This made Yuji scared and fearful. Suddenly, Yuji gets punched through multiple buildings and afterwards became immobile. After so many instances of being hurt by Sukuna, Yuji Todori started losing it. This didn't end with him, but although Angel fought Sukuna, it just ended with her eaten arm and she ended up being chucked off the building. Yuji recovered, saw the incident and retaliates with a scream similar to against Mahito. This is no longer suffering but a bundle of hatred and rage. He was numb to the pain as he shouts Sukuna with strength from out of nowhere. Yuji went back to the days of Mahito and asked Sukuna why can't you just live without causing suffering. Yuji instead of fighting the ideology and their reasoning remembers quickly, these guys are and will always be cursed. Sukuna says the weak could just swallow the suffering that lives give them, it's not his fault. Yuji goes ahead, decides to challenge Sukuna to swallow his suffering. Yuji has had enough of these curses doing whatever they want, in fact if it's just pain, Yuji won't stop. He seems like he can't be affected by pain and can move onwards even if it means being hit by Sukuna's slashes. Now Maki joins the fray and Yuji is happy to destroy Sukuna and kill him overall. But then. Yurume interrupts their battle and Yuji is stopped in his tracks, while Maki as well. He was frozen, he gets out, he screams for Sukuna to come back down but is then met with laughter and rage. Even if you're being mocked, 
don't let the embers of your rage burn out. Yuji's mission now is while he is soaked in the curse energy known as Sukuna. As long as he can kill him, he will eat anything to make him go stronger. And as you can see from this panel, it seems Yuji Tadori might have eaten some of his brothers. Yuji in a way tries to apologize to Choso about the brothers. And it could be in reference to the brothers that he killed. But at the same time, Choso says, as long as they're living within you. And I'm assuming that he generally apologized to Choso for eating the brothers. But at the same time, he knows he has to do what he has to do if he wants to beat Sukuna. So only God knows what kind of move he's about to pull out or what he's going to bring out from the woodwork. But as you can see, the moral of this, the suffering that Yuji Tadori has gone through has been very progressive throughout this series of Jujutsu Kaisen. This seems to be a power that has been within him from the longest time. To be able to endure a lot of pain, Sukuna even hints that there's a reason as to why he's got all this strength from nowhere and it's to do with Kijaku. No one in Jujutsu Kaisen has suffered more than this guy. In fact, I don't even remember the last time an MC suffered as much as Yuji Tsudori specifically, not in terms of the collateral effects of other characters, but specifically one character. Yuji has suffered the most, 100%. But this will be his weapon to defeat Sukuna. The reason I'm saying this is because the fact we know that one finger of Sukuna is with Gojo or Yuji in this moment, that means that Yuji Tadori will eat the finger and perhaps die, but he wouldn't be sad about it, especially if it means saving Megumi. And what would actually be the case is that Yuji Tadori is going to bear all the suffering and die as a result, so then all the suffering of the world goes as a whole. This is what it's going to build up to. The person who has suffered the most has bared the suffering of Nanami, bared the suffering of everyone else that was killed in Shibuya, etc, etc, and he dies along with Sukuna, saving everybody around and no more people have to suffer and die anymore because he's been the pillar of the savior of suffering. But that will be where the video concludes. Hey, I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you haven't already, make sure you watch my last video. My last video was compi. It was kind of cool. And I hope you didn't forget to leave a like or subscribe. And yeah, that's it to the new people that come and visit my channel. Njana. Mm,